Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to Crossings. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Today we just have one quick announcement and we are finally moving into the New Testament today as we start off with the character of Matthew. Welcome to church. Be sure to open up your YouVersion event so that you can go in and update your information. We are speaking directly to you moms. We got tons of addresses this past weekend, but we need more. We have a very special Mother's Day gift, and we want to make sure that it gets to the right place. So be sure to update all of your information. You can do that by clicking the link that says Connect Card. Inside our YouVersion event app, you can also submit your prayer requests, and you have the ability to give. Um, we want to say thank you to you guys for your continued giving, for your continued checking in with um, us on YouVersion and be sure to save that event because everything will be gone the moment this service is over. So if you want to access your notes or the scriptures or anything from today, you'll need to save that event. If you guys will join me, we'll pray for this morning's sermon. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much um, for this church and for the ability to continue to hear from your word. Lord, we know that it doesn't matter that we're not all sitting in the same building, but God, that all of our hearts are aligned towards glorifying you with this morning. God, that we would give you praise in our homes, um, that we would raise our children to know you and to know your word and to love you. God, that as we go through our week um, with the changes that have been made, God, that you would continue to allow us to love others, that we would be the salt and the light of the world, um, God, that you would shine through us and that your glory would be known. In your son's holy name we pray, amen. Hey, good morning, Crossings Church. Great to see you. Here we are, day 39, I think it is, which is crazy. I got a haircut like two weeks into the uh, quarantine because that's when uh, uh, our gracious governor allowed us to get haircuts, and since then they determined that you can't get haircuts, and uh, the, the longer my hair gets, the more I realize I'm an old goat. Uh, so uh, I'm sure you're discovering some stuff about yourself too, uh, like your propensity to turn off the YouTube once it starts. You better not touch that, but I, oof. So here's the thing, man. You know I'm not a camera guy. This is not my gig, but that's all I'm saying. Don't turn me off. Don't you do it. I don't know who you are, but I know you're doing it. All right, so we'll get past that. Uh, we're going to talk about Matthew uh, today on Character Driven Series. And the truth is, Matthew was a uh, interesting dude, uh, probably a guy that, uh, you know, you hear Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and uh, you think, hallelujah. Uh, Matthew probably didn't start that way at all. In fact, I'm going to say he probably stayed pretty real to the end. And uh, we're going to look at some lessons in his life and uh, some lessons in the book of Matthew. Um, now, all of us have had uh, people that we've gotten to know that um, are humble. It's hard for them to brag on themselves. We're going to see a little bit about that in Matthew's life. Um, but I want to start with um, a word of prayer. Uh, I, I've had a great time uh, just in devotional during this uh, shutdown one of the things I've enjoyed doing is uh, worshiping with the Psalms and just uh, spending extra time in the morning and digging into the Word of God. I hope you're doing that. Uh, but for now, let's pray together. Uh, there's some prayer needs. We have uh, Jeremy Martinez's wife, Angelica, that's fighting the coronavirus um, right now. Pray that God would heal her. Uh, we've got Mark Webb that's still in the hospital. Uh, I think or he's just getting out, but uh, let's pray he heals quickly. Uh, he had surgery on his foot. And, and if you have a need right now, if you're at home with a need, uh, we're going to pray together. So if you'll bow your heads with me, and we're going to pray that God would touch uh, your heart, your body, what, whatever your need is, the Lord says we don't have because we don't ask. So we're going to ask right now. Father, thank you for the privilege of coming to you. Uh, whether we're together or we're separate, Lord, we know that you hear us. Pray God touch the people of our church, Lord, move in their bodies, move in their hearts, encourage those that are discouraged, provide for those that have needs. Uh, Lord, we turn to you. We know you're able. You're our great provider. And we just ask that you would do all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
Okay, if you have a Bible today, go to Matthew chapter 9. And we're going to read the passages to where Jesus finds Matthew. So it says, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So here's where Jesus finds Matthew. He's collecting taxes. He's at the tax collector booth. Matthew has written this story. And it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of detail there. And uh, I'm going to jump over to now when uh, a chapter over where Jesus calls the 12. Now he's going to pick 12 disciples. Matthew chapter 10, verse 2, it says, These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who's called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector. Let me pause right there real quick. When he writes of himself... He gives himself the description, Matthew, the tax collector. It's interesting because if you read Mark's account of this happening, they they don't even call him Matthew. Matthew's a name he picked up after he started following Jesus. They call him Levi, the tax collector. Mark does and so does Luke. I'm sorry, back up. They say Levi, they didn't call him a tax collector. They just said he called Levi. Why does Matthew take, he does two things. One, he uses his changed name, his I'm now following Jesus, I went from Levi to Matthew. But he calls himself a tax collector. Uh, This is interesting, and I I think it says a lot about Matthew, because um, what we see in a tax collector is he was actually considered a, a traitor to his people. If you were a tax collector, you were no friend of the Jews. I did a little research this week. I was talking to Pastor Randy. And I said, hey, I'm looking for some stories of where some Jewish people have been disloyal. And he says, hey, what about in the ghettos in World War II? There were uh, uh, what were called kapos. And what they were, they were captains for the Jewish people. And they worked for the Nazis. And they would issue discipline. And they would uh, carry out the Nazis' orders. And, and when World War II ended... If the Jewish people found kapos, uh, they dealt with them quickly. In fact, there were even innocent people that were killed that were mistaken for some of the Jews that had turned coat and and worked for the Nazis and uh, were were killed or badly hurt. So Israel did what was called the kapo trials. And it was fascinating to read some of the trials and and how uh, the Jews were so hardened against a Jewish person that would work with the enemy. Well, let me tell you, Matthew was a capo. He, the Romans had occupied uh, Jerusalem. They had occupied Israel. And they were brutal. In many ways, they were brutal. Uh, have you ever heard of the statement being nailed to the wall? I mean, that's how G- uh, the Romans dealt with insurrectionists. They literally have stories of them nailing insurrectionists. And sometimes they were Jews to the inner, inner walls of, of palaces and houses. Uh, They were brutal in how they dealt with the Jewish population. And now we have tax collectors. And the tax collectors weren't Roman, they were Jewish. And Matthew was one of them. Can you imagine how hated they were? In fact, uh, all through the Gospels, when you see the Pharisees indicting Jesus, they're like, you hang out with tax collectors and sinners. Uh, Tax collectors was a really bad thing to hang out with. Um, And I think it's interesting that Matthew, when he writes, when Jesus picked the 12, he says, I'm Matthew, meaning I'm changed, but at once I was a tax collector. I mean, it just floats right in there. I'm Matthew, the tax collector. The other guys don't even think of writing his title because it was a shameful title. It was something that wasn't to be bragged about, especially when you're being called one of the apostles. But I think it's really neat that Matthew was able to say, I'm not Levi, I'm Matthew, meaning I'm changed, but I do have a story. 
Can I tell you, some of you guys have a story. We don't brag about our stories. And I've seen some people do this, like, oh, the glory days. And they'll talk about when they lived in sin and wallowed in shame. And, and you almost see a gleam in their eye and where they just revel in what they used to be. That's not what Matthew was doing. Because he's using the term, I'm Matthew, the tax collector. And, and can I say this? It's perfectly right for you to, who, what's your new identity in Christ? What has he done in your life? But where did you come from? I think it's important to add that part of your story. Uh, where did he bring you from? Like the blind guy in John chapter 9 that says, I was blind, now I see. Uh, I relate to Matthew here because we all have a story. And I, I imagine some of you this morning can relate to him. Don't take for granted where you are today in Jesus. In fact, you should worship him. You should thank him for his grace and, and where he's brought you and what he's brought you out of. And you need to remind people, I once was this, but now I'm a work of God's grace. I think it's important when we look at Matthew's life, we see this illustrated. He goes on to... Um, in Luke chapter 5, verse 27, we see in Matthew's account that Jesus walks up and just says, follow me, and says he gets up and follows him. But Luke, the great historian, full of detail, says this, after this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector, tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his booth, his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up. Now here's where Luke gets interesting. Left everything and followed him. This is really neat. Luke's account says he left everything. This says something about Matthew. Uh, can I say this? In our times when we just bump into the presence and the love of God, uh, I know for me it, it was just it's been some cool mornings where it's like God breaks through all the stuff and all the worry and fear and, and it's just you and Jesus. And when you have those moments where you recognize the presence and the love and the power of God and how close he is to us, in those moments, nothing else matters. Listen, if you've not experienced that, you need to spend some time and ask him for that. You need to spend some more time in his word. Uh, he loves you, and he wants to reveal himself to you in a way that would cause you to act like Matthew. Jesus told a story, a parable, of uh, the pearl of great worth. And it talks about this man that found this pearl in a field, and it was of great value, so much so that he went and sold everything he had and bought that field. Can I say, when we bump into the love of God, it's just like that. You'll leave everything, nothing else matters everything else is dim in comparison to the love of god for your life and matthew caught that right away uh, and luke records it so well matthew again is humble matthew doesn't count the cost in his writing uh, but luke does for him and he says he left everything if you were a tax collector you made some bucks there's a reason these guys did this job um, and can i encourage you bump into the love of god uh, when you bump into the love of God and you hear the voice of Jesus say, I love you, come follow me, it becomes an easy thing to not worry about stuff. It becomes an easy thing to not stress out. It becomes an easy thing to say, God, I don't know how many days I have in my life, but you've got them all. And it only comes when you get near Jesus and you hear him say, come on, follow me. Sometimes it's in a, a quiet room downstairs by yourself or a private place in the house. Or maybe it's early morning or late at night when you've just sought him and you hear Jesus whisper, hey, come on, let's go. Can I encourage you to find that assurance in this time? So some lessons here. Oh, going on. And then Matthew's all humble again. When in Matthew's account, he just says, there was a banquet at my house. And tax collectors and sinners happen to be there. Here's what Luke says in his account. In Luke chapter 5, verse 29, says, Then Levi, he gives Matthew the credit, held a great banquet. Matthew didn't say it was a great banquet. Luke does. He says it's a great banquet for Jesus. Again, Matthew didn't say it was a great banquet. Matthew didn't say he threw the banquet. 
Matthew didn't say it was for Jesus, but Luke does. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. Just love this story. It gives us a great insight into Matthew, into his character. A couple of things we see right away. We see that this was a guy that was humble. We see that this was a guy that bumped into something and someone more valuable than success more valuable than reputation, more valuable than anything in the world, and that's Jesus. And it, had to, it hasn't changed. It's the same for us today. When you bump into Jesus, you bump into everything. And if you haven't bumped into him, I'm so sorry. you got to find him. So, what can we learn from this? There's a couple points I want to make here. Number one, tax collectors weren't so pretty, and neither are you. Listen, God chooses the humble things of this world. You may say to yourself, well, God's never going to show himself to me that way. Uh, People experiencing the love of God, that's for really spiritual, really holy, really, they're much better people than me. Can I say nonsense? Listen, this guy was the dregs of society, most hated dude on the block in Jewish culture, and Jesus picks him. Can I tell you, Jesus created you. He knows you. He loves you. He'll look past your bad resume and look to the person he created and look to the person that was created for him and he'll call you jesus works with us when we're not the best looking um romans 125 through 27 says this for the foolishness of god is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of god is stronger than human strength Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many influential, not many of you were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak thing, the things of this world to shame the strong. Listen, God p- picks people just like you. The next thing I want to uh, point out is make a move. Listen, when you have that opportunity or that urge to, maybe I should spend some time in the Bible. Maybe I should pray. Maybe I should repent. Uh, Maybe I should make things right with a loved one. Can I tell you, move then. Don't wait. When the pretty girl comes to you at the dance and says, you want to dance? You say, yes. When Jesus comes to you and says, hey, you want to dance? You want to follow me? Yes. Not later, not when it's convenient, not, I can't dance, I have no rhythm. No, now, uh, to, tomorrow's a word found only in a fool's dictionary. I know some of you have heard me say that before, but your opportunity to find God is today. And when you sense a drawing, when you sense a tug from the Lord, be like Matthew. He got up, he left everything. He didn't wait. He didn't say, Jesus, come back when I'm done collecting taxes. Come back after... Uh, June 15th for this year. Uh, Catch me later, Jesus. He did it now. Guys, today is the day. Don't play this. If this happens, then I'll love God. Do it today. I don't care if you have to change things around. I don't care if you have to repent. I don't care if, if you have to humble yourself. I don't care if it costs you stuff. Do it now. What in the world would you possibly hang on to and miss him? Move today. Make it happen. And then the last thing is this. He brought some friends. He throws this party. A lot of tax collectors, a lot of sinners. Can I say uh, the religious people today didn't understand that? In fact, they got the disciples together and like, why does your teacher have these guys here? Can I give you a simple answer? Because of a guy named Matthew. A guy named Matthew loved his crowd enough to say, hey, I'm throwing a great banquet for this guy named Jesus that I'm following. Come to my house and eat with him. So many, so many of you have people in your life that you're the most influential voice to them. Bring them to Jesus. What else are you going to do? Make more money? Spend your uh, coronavirus cash that the government sent you? Uh, Listen, do something worthwhile and bring a friend to Jesus. This is done a lot of ways. I mean, for some of us, you're very invitational. You'll invite them to maybe watch this video. 
Which means if you invite a friend to watch a video, don't turn me off in two minutes. I know who you are. Invite a friend maybe to watch a video with you. And uh, maybe invite a friend to, uh, on our website, there's a Pursue God tab that has all kinds of really cool videos uh, that have discussion questions. Maybe you'll invite a friend to that. But bring a friend. Think that way. And then when we do this stuff, we begin to know the heart of God. And I'm going to read this one more time. It says, Matthew 9, 12 through 13, On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Here's the good news. If you're anything like me, Jesus called me. He's called you. Uh, So this week, I want you to uh, listen to his voice. Hear him say, come on, and then move on it. Don't hesitate. Don't say, well, I'll have a move of God in my life later. Go after him like a drowning person goes after their next breath. And bring a friend with you. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We do, God. And just pray for your presence. Even now, God, fill living rooms all over the place. God, we want to repent for not seeking you. We want to repent for living in doubt and worry and fear. Help us be like Matthew, Lord. Let us humbly follow you radically and bring others with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, uh, we go live on Wednesday nights. We'll be here 7 o'clock. The children's group will be uh, doing uh, children's services 6 tonight. Uh, The youth do uh, a meeting virtually on Wednesday nights. So there are things happening. Uh, If you need anything, man, email us, call us. Uh, You know you can still call, and I have plenty of people do that. Uh, I miss you guys. We love you, and we'll see you soon. Blessings.